It happens sometimes that a single data point can completely screw up the entire statistical modeling procedure. When you have really unusual data points, those are called outliers. They're also sometimes called anomalies or extreme data, non-representative data, or sometimes noise. Here's an example. Here we have a cluster of data points. And you can see this one data point is really unusual. It's definitely non-representative. It is extreme. We would call this an outlier. Now, in some cases, outliers are really easy to detect, like this example. But in other examples, it can be a little bit more ambiguous and difficult to decide. You know, is this point here an outlier? It's certainly a little bit extreme. It's a little bit unusual, but it's not as far away from the distribution as in this example. So maybe you say, well, these two are outliers. Well, how about these five? Maybe all five of these points are non-representative data. So you can start to see here that sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not so easy to identify these uh, outlier points. So why are these outliers bad? Well, they can skew the model into ways that are non-representative of the rest of the data sample. Now, in part, that depends on the nature of the outlier and where it is in with respect to the other variables in the data set. So I want to show you some examples of that. Here we have some data, and this is another data point up here. So this data point is actually not going to have such a negative impact on the relationship between these two axes here. And you can see why looking at this line. So these are the best fit lines. These lines go through the data points to identify a trend in the data. So the blue line here is without the outlier, and the yellow line is including the outlier. Now you can see in both of these cases that the slopes, or how much they these lines increase, they are basically the same, including and excluding this outlier here. So the outlier did shift the entire model up, but it didn't really change the slope. Now very often in statistics, we're more interested in the slope than in just the overall shift on the y-axis. So this outlier actually is very unusual, but it's not so deleterious for the model fitting. That's called low leverage. Then we have a data point over here, where again we have this trend line here, and we can draw the trend lines with and without that outlier being present. So here you see that when we include the outlier that pulls the line all the way up here, so we're actually getting a, a really different slope of this line including versus excluding the outlier. So here's a case where the outlier has higher leverage because it has a bigger effect on the resulting statistical model. Now it also, the, the effect of an outlier on the results also depends on how much data you have. If you have a ton of data, if you have a lot of data like this, then the outlier is still going to affect the statistical model, but less so compared to when you have a, le a smaller amount of data. So you can see that it actually gets a little bit subtle. It's not that all outliers are bad. It's that outliers definitely deserve some attention. And anytime you are analyzing a data set, you should always inspect the data for the possibility of outliers and then decide what to deal with them. Now, where do these things even come from? Where do outliers come from? Well, they can come from a variety of sources. Sometimes there's just noise in the data. Sometimes there's a problem with the equipment. So, you know, there's an equipment malfunction and that caused some unusual data. Sometimes there's human error. Maybe someone is entering in the data and they press the wrong key by accident. Sometimes if you're having uh, participants who are, who are volunteering in research, you just get some weird people who do weird things. Uh, but there's also just natural variation. You know, things in the universe are naturally variable. People act very differently from each other. Mountains all look very different from each other. No two snowflakes are alike. Now, it's important to think about where these outliers come from because that affects the strategy for dealing with outliers. So what do you do when you find outliers in your data? Well, you have two strategies for dealing with outliers, and it depends on where you think the outliers are coming from. So it depends on your assumptions about the origins of those outliers. So strategy one is to identify the outliers and remove them from the data prior to any analyses. Now you're running, you're doing this based on the assumption that the outliers are noise, they're invalid, they're not real data.
On the other hand, you can leave the outliers in and use different classes of statistical methods to attenuate the negative impact of the outliers on the results. So you're not removing the outliers, you're just making sure to use statistical methods where the results are not going to be driven by one single outlier. And here the assumption is that outliers are unusual, they're a little bit different, but they're still valid data, so we are not justified to throw them out just because they don't like them. So you can see that we have uh, different ways of dealing with outliers depending on where we think they come from. Nonetheless, outliers are a se potentially serious issue in, uh, in analyzing data, and it's something that should always be investigated.